Hi and welcome to Edwards Motorhomes. Today I'm going to show you a handover video on this Hobby K60. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a walk around on the outside of the van first and just show you a couple of the few bits that are on there. So first of all, we've got your awning light and your awning just above. And then we have your fresh water tank. So this is where you'll simply just pop a hose in, um, fill it up. As we move around, we obviously have your bike rack, parking sensors, and then we have your cassette toilet. So with your cassette toilet, before you can do any of this, you've got to make sure that the blade is closed on the toilet itself. And then when you do that, there's a little blue clip just here. Lift that up, slide that out. Then you can use it almost a little bit as a suitcase. Wheel it to your house and point. Once you get to your house and point, all you'll need to do is twist that, unscrew the cap, tip it that way. Whilst you're tipping it that way, press that button in. It helps the airflow go through so it doesn't all glug through and go everywhere and make a bit of a mess. Once you've done that, stick some water in it, swill it around a bit, again empty it. There you go. Once you're done, Put the cap back on and what you'll do is your blue chemical or your green chemical you will put into here your cap is actually a measure for that there's little readings on there so you know how much you're putting in it's always advisable to put it straight into the cassette toilet as opposed to putting it through the toilet because it will stain the pan and we'll slide this back in like that there you go so that's your cassette toilet we have your flue for your boiler just here, along with your grey waste drain just there. All you need to do is twist that and it will drop over on a grid on most sites. And then we have your electric point just there. Again, just make sure that you lift the cap on the actual electric plug itself to take it off because it does make sure it's in there. And then last but not least, we have where your fuel filler cap is. Fuel filler cap just there. That will use your ignition key to open that. And then finally, we have your release for your bonnet. Let's have a little look inside. So moving on to the cab next. If we look down here, you'll see we've got electric cab windows. We have our electric mirrors and they're also adjustable by just twisting this knob here. As we move across onto the steering wheel, we've got your windscreen wipers, indicators, cruise control. As we move across, we have your tablet and phone holder. All you need to do to pop these out is pull that little handle down, and then obviously you can pop it, place it in there. When putting this back, always make sure that you put that back in, because a lot of the time they'll snap when people just push them back down. Close everything back up, pop it back down. Here we have your radio. And again, they're, they're relatively straightforward. Uh, this has got DAB, uh, you can plug a USB in, you've got a CD player um, and you've also got the ability to be able to display the phone screen onto here as well. As we move down we've got your air conditioning along with your heat controls and which direction you'd like to go in with that. We've got your traction plus just here, your hill descent assist, we've got obviously hazard warning lights, this will lock the van up internally if you want to and then you've got your heated mirrors just there. We do have a 12 volt socket and a USB along with it. Next, we have a little cool box. So, uh, if you want to keep a bar of chocolate or a bottle of water in there, cool. It'll work off the air conditioning, so it'll work with that system. As we move on to cab lines, so all you need to do is just pinch and pull across. Same with the other side, bring them together, this magnet strip. Now it's always worth getting a hairband or an elastic band to put around there because there are horror stories of um, people who have arrived at site late at night, they're getting unchanged and all of a sudden they pop open. So it's just advisable just to have it because if they don't quite meet, you'll find that that could be an issue. Now, when you do put these away, always make sure that they clip back into place because if you do turn left, then that will fly across in front of you. And also, you've got your door blinds. So again, just pinch, 
bring across from the bottom until it meets and then when you bring it back keep it straight tuck the bottom in and then again make sure they're clipped it's worth noting that if ever you've got kids just make sure they try and stay away from them because they are quite fragile but they do serve the purpose that they need to do okay so 12 volt control panel and Truma heating system so with your 12 volt control panel it's kind of hobby's own really um, what you have is a series of buttons here, you also have buttons here, and you also have this to scroll through the buttons on this sub-menu. So you've got your light switches, okay, so you've got kitchen, awning, light for in the lounge, awning light, and then you've also got spotlights. You've then also got presets as well, so you can save like a particular lighting setup that you prefer in these, and then you've got your on-off switch. And when you go through here, if you use this to scroll and press the button in, so if you go into here, you can see your levels for your tanks just there. You've got your battery levels just there, so you've got habitation battery and you've got vehicle battery. Then this also works your heating system. Now, my advice is, is to use this. It's a lot easier and it's a lot simpler to use than this. It does the same thing but it's a different sort of setup, so I would recommend you carry on using the Truma heating system. So, we've also got media, so this little note here. You can turn your radio off and on from this position here, so you can have it on without the vehicle actually being switched on. Again, lighting presets, so you can choose in here, so you've got your bedroom lighting, got your generic main lights, and then you've also got things like your kitchen lights. Again, we'll go back out of there. You've got time, date, temperature, internally and externally. And then you've got settings, so you can adjust the clocks. We move on to your Truma heating system. We'll pop it on. Now, the first thing you do when you go onto this system, you've got this to scroll through, and you just simply press the button in to get into it. So the very first thing you'll do, is you go to the, the gas with the two lightning bolts, if you like. And you've got a selection, you've got gas, mix one, which is gas and one electric element, mix two, which is gas and two electric elements. You've got one single electric element and two electric elements. Now, because we're hooked up, we are already on two electric elements, okay? The next thing you'll do is switch over to the little motor home. So it's your thermostat. So you'll set your temperature just in here. So we'll pop it up at 21. Once you've done that, you move over to the fan You've got eco and high, so basically that's just your fan speed. If you choose high, it will come out more than the eco. Now, your water is separate. This button here, you go into it, you've got off, eco, which is 40 degrees, hot, which is 60 degrees, and boost. Boost will prioritize the hot water over the heating of your van, because nobody wants to have a shower in a cold van. So once you've finished with that, all you need to do is go to the motorhome with the thermostat on it, hit off, that will shut everything down. You've then got your timer for your heating. So if you like to get up at seven, you want to set it at six, that's where you'll do it in there. You've got your clock, obviously you can adjust the time to whatever time it is. So it's currently 2.12. And then we've got your settings. So you've got offset to offset the screen, temperature so you can have degrees or Fahrenheit brightness of the screen you've got language if you don't fancy it in English and you want to go for a bit of German or Italian that's the route to go index now I'll come back to index in a minute and you've got reset now index sometimes it can be possible to get a warning triangle on this box here if you get that all you need to do is click onto it and it'll give you a code once you've got that code you can then go back into index and you can find out what that code is and then contact Truma to work out what it is now more often than not it can be user error uh, because it comes down to sometimes the gas isn't on or sometimes you're not plugged in and you've chosen an electric so it could be something as simple as that but that's how you can clear that and once you're finished all you need to do if, you, if you're not using it for whatever reason keep your finger pressed on here and it'll turn the panel off this kill switch here so if you're storing the van and you're not using it hit this switch that'll turn everything off that kills everything coming out of the leisure battery so it's a good way just to save any power or your battery draining from using any little bits at all. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to the third berth, which is basically the child's berth. First thing we're going to do is just move this passenger seat round. So all you need to do is just pull this lever here towards you, swing it round. These two here are height adjustable. One does the front, the other does the rear part of the seat. We just need to slide it fully back into its position. Now the table, all you need to do is lift, take it off like that, take the bottom part out, pop it onto the bottom rail, and that becomes the base. Then, you have another little piece of mattress that will just slot into there. And there you have your single bed. You also have a little bit of safety. Noticing that it's a, a child's berth also means that you have this handy little net. Should you have any little ones sleeping on there, you can make sure they're safe and they won't roll out. And all you need to do is just clip this into place. What it does is it makes a protective barrier. There's another one underneath the table just here and another one up in the ceiling just there. As they say, they don't roll out into the hallway. Okay, next, so fly screens and blinds. So here we have your skylight. Now we have blind, fly screen. Then to open up your skylight, just press the button in, slide it across, opens up. You must remember to shut these. When you leave site or wherever you camped up overnight, first thing you think of when you're packing up, get these closed because you don't want them left open. They can be quite costly should they go. Next one, you've got blind, pull it down again. You've got your fly screen just above and you can have a sort of half and half thing going on. When we come to the windows, all you need to do, there's little buttons just in there. Press those in to open up the latches and they are on a, a ratchet so you heard the click there that's where your position is all you need to do is push it right to the top to bring it back and there we go as i say remember to close these up before you travel okay so next we move on to your boiler which is located just underneath these two travel seats here and what we need to do is just take these cushions off pop them to one side like so, then you lift up basically like a lid. We've got your boiler, and if you also look here, we've got your trip switches, and behind here, we also have some gas isolator switches just there. Now, with your boiler, in regards to draining, at the moment the boiler is closed, so if you fill up the fresh water tank, it won't just go straight through the system and leak straight through the bottom. It's closed, it'll fill the boiler up, then fill your fresh water tank up. Now, if we turn this from this position here, 90 degrees, to that, there is a little button just down here. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's like a little node, that'll pop out. Now, when it comes to locking your boiler back off, turn it back that quarter turn and just push that node back in. That means your boiler is now sealed. Okay, so kitchen. Now, underneath these two glass covers, we have your sink this side, we have your gas hobs here, you've got your temperature gauges here for your hobs, and also your igniter switch there. Remember, your gas isolator switch is located here for this. And we'll move around to the fridge, which is a compressor fridge, which is quite handy because it opens up from both sides. So, we switch it on with this button here. So you've got three options, you've got performance, silent and boost. Now this is a 12 volt unit, it doesn't work off the gas, um, and all you need to do is to cycle through these. So we'll start at the beginning, we've got performance, which is more of a standard mode if you like, uh, it means the fridge is on and it's going to go to the temperature you need to. You then have silent, so over night time it's probably best to switch over to that, it makes the fridge a lot quieter. And then finally we've got boost. Boost just gets it down to that temperature a lot quicker. And here, if you keep your finger press on there, this will light up and you can adjust your temperature. And that's your kitchen. Now, outside, I was talking about a grey handle that you need to make sure that the blade's closed. So, if we open this up, currently the blade is open. Now, if you slide this grey handle here, it closes it. Now, 
The only time that you'll need this open is if you're actually using it. Otherwise, keep it closed. It just stops any bad smells coming through. You can also turn this to get into the most comfortable position. Your toilet flush is just here. And also, if you come round to the back here, you'll see that we've got a green light. That will turn red when your cassette toilet is full. Okay, so just another couple of pieces about your shower. Now, there is a floor on here, which is obviously when it's not in use, but make sure you remove it when you use your shower because that's your draining area just there. And your shower, you just pull out from here, and that's your shower head. Okay, so moving on to the rear of the van, you'll see you've got your gas bottle locker just here. Plenty of room there for two six kilogram bottles, uh, and obviously you've got your regulator just there. Now, your bed, if you wanted to get anything bigger in there, all you need to do is lift that up, lash it up using these. And obviously you've got a huge amount of space there to get stuff through. You can also slide out those two panels there should you need to get anything longer through. Another thing to point out is your water tank. So if you're draining down your fresh water tank, you just take this off. If you look just here, this black screw hat cap here, all you need to do is open that up and that will drain your fresh water down. So next up, you've got your oven. Now what you've got is this winder here, it's a little black part here, you can just unwind should you need to have a little bit of length, so for those that are vertically challenged. What you'll do is the two pins at the top here, pop that into there, and it's going to wind down. It's always better to have two people and one can just take the weight. Spring loaded, just push them back to release them. Bring it down to the floor. And obviously, you've got your height choice. Once you've got it into position, this clip here, always quite stiff when they're new, but once you've got them into position, it should just lock off like so. Put your other one up, and then you're away. You've also got a third one that you can pop in the middle just to give it that extra support. And that's your awning. Thank you for watching our handover video on our Hobby K60 today. We do have other handover videos on our YouTube channel at Edwards Motorhomes. Thank you for watching.